Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. You reached another true crime recap and today we're going to be doing an episode of Evil Lives Here, Sleeping with the Enemy. This man was a disgusting individual. He had a little secret that he failed to tell his girlfriend. Let's get right into this story. Sarita and Karim met up at a local hospital that they both worked at. They were both security officers. They just started having friendly co-worker conversation. Sarita says that she didn't know where things were going between the two of them, but there was an intense attraction. Sarita says the first time they had sex, Karim said to her, it is your choice if you want to use a condom or not. She says that Karim was more than willing not to wear a condom. He told her that it didn't matter to him. Sarita says that they started spending more time together and she let Karim know, look, I don't want no casual situation. You know, I want a serious monogamous relationship. Karim said to her, I don't use condoms when I'm in relationships. Rita says to him, well, if you don't want to use condoms in relationships, then we need to go get tested. And until we get tested, we're going to use condoms. Rim agreed to get tested and they both waited to have sex until they got their test results. So Sarita gets her test results. Everything comes back negative. Sarita says that Karim was supposed to be having the same exact test done. And when he showed her his labs, all the other tests for the STI was there except HIV. What about the HIV test? Why is that not on here? Rita says that Karim told her that they said that he didn't need a printout for the HIV test. If there were any problems, they would contact him. She says that sounded plausible. She thought of herself as street smart, so she just went along with it. Never got a phone call, so I guess it's all good. She says that she trusted him, so she got on birth control and they never used condoms again. Sarita says that one of her co-workers seemed to have an attitude about the fact that they were getting closer. Aww. Look at you too. How's the missus these days? Why don't you just shut up? Karim said to the co-worker, why don't you mind your business? And he called her a name. Rita says that it alarmed her because she had never seen Karim act like that. What is she talking about? It's nothing. It's nothing. Did it sound like nothing? He told me that he was with his ex fiance for five years and we applied for a marriage license, but we didn't get married. She called off the engagement. So Sarita believed his story and she felt that the coworker was just messing with them because maybe she was jealous. So eventually Sarita decides to introduce him to her mom because her mom heard about the fact that they were dating through her son. And she said it was around Thanksgiving time that she was trying to get to meet his family and he would not hear of it. Karim's explanation for not wanting her to meet his family was that they were still attached to his ex-fiance and Karim told her that his mother said, don't bring anyone around me unless y'all are engaged. So Christmas came around and it was the same thing. She asked about the family. He gave some more excuses. And after that, she says she stopped asking. She says that his family knew his secret and that's why he wanted to keep them away from her. One time, Karim says something so disturbing to Sarita. What he said was, I want to leave my mark on you. Karim said that he wanted to leave an impression on her life, even after they break up. And Sarita took it as a good thing. She thought, this is the person I want to be with. She says that she really loved him. So Sarita says the last time she felt normal was April or May of 2014. She says the next couple days after that, she thought she had the flu. She says she felt like that for about one to two weeks. Sarita said that it lasted longer than she thought a flu should last. And that's when she started going to the doctor. So Karim would accompany her to the doctor's visits. In fact, he would invite himself to be there. Sarita says that he was acting concerned, but honestly, he was just trying to keep a watchful eye. Sarita says that the doctors did not know what was wrong with her and it took them a long time to figure it out. So the doctor in this scene says to her that he's gonna send her to a nutritionist. Karim is over here like, yeah, see, I told you, you know, you needed to get your health up, your nutrition up. Sarita says that Karim was going to the doctor's appointments to see what his next move should be. She says that Karim 
watched her get sick and said nothing. Sarita started to get progressively sicker. She was losing her hair. She was getting skin conditions. She said that she lost so much weight. She didn't know what was going on with her. Doctor said her labs don't look good. These are symptoms of HIV. Sarita says that this was the first time that HIV was ever mentioned and she didn't think that's what it was because they both tested and according to what he said and according to her test, they were negative. So the doctor asks Sarita if he could rerun the HIV test. She said, sure. And Kareem is over here comforting her, saying, baby, it's going to be okay. It's not HIV. So Sarita says that Kareem stood there with her, watching her deteriorate. And he would rather her get sick and die than tell her the truth. So Sarita says that when she went home after that doctor's visit, she was pretty confident that she didn't have HIV. So they went back to the house and started researching what type of cancers it could have possibly be. Of course, Karim is coming up with all these different types of illnesses knowing that he gave her HIV. One week later, Sarita received her diagnosis. She in fact has HIV. So one week later, Sarita was in the ICU because she wasn't feeling well. She had a fever that wouldn't break. The doctor comes in and lets her know, you, know, you have HIV. They asked her if she had any questions and she said, no, get out of my room. Like, so then she calls Karim. When Sarita called him, she told Karim he needs to get to this hospital right now. Sarita says that she knew that Karim had it because he was the only person that she had slept with. So Sarita says that she thought that Maybe Karim had cheated on her. So he got to the hospital and she asks him, who did you cheat on me with? And he's denying it. He's saying he doesn't know what she's talking about. And Sarita let him know then and there that she was diagnosed with HIV. Well, who are you cheating on me with? He's still saying, what are you talking about? So Sarita said to him, either you cheated on me or you lied about your test. Karim says, no, nah, I didn't lie on the test. And so then she says, so that means you cheated on me. It's either one or the other. Which one is it? You so Sarita says for the first time, Karim had no answers. Sarita says all of a sudden he starts leaning over, acting like he's crying, trying his best to conjure up some freaking tears out of those dry tear ducts. So Sarita kicks him out of her room. She says that she felt like she was in a grieving process and he was just making it worse. So she blocked his number. He would come to her house and she wouldn't answer the door. She didn't want anything to do with him. So after her diagnosis, Sarita fell into a depression. She didn't want to live anymore, so she took an overdose of insulin. Her mom found her when she saw her car outside and she wouldn't respond and ended up calling the ambulance. She doesn't give a time frame either from when she was diagnosed with HIV to when she let him know and stopped contacting him. She doesn't tell us exactly when she got pregnant, but she ended up getting pregnant with Karim's baby. She calls him and he says that he wanted her to have an abortion because he didn't want a child that has the same thing that they had. So the doctor told her that if she kept taking her HIV medication, there was only a 5% chance the baby would end up with HIV and she was determined to go through with the pregnancy. Rita says from the day that her son was born, she chose life. She no longer wanted to kill herself. And that's when she decided that Karim was not going to get away with what he did to her. So she decides that she's going to call his mom and lets his mom know that she was dating him and now she has HIV. Karim's mom asked her she spoke to his wife. So after Sarita found out that Karim was married, she got on social media and she found his wife. She sent his wife a message and told her everything that was going on. So Sarita says a week after communicating with Karim's wife, she found out that his wife was HIV positive too. The wife told Sarita that Karim had given HIV to her and he had never taken any medication. So Sarita decided to make a social media post, letting everybody know that she's HIV positive and telling them that Karim is the person that transmitted the virus to her. Sarita says after she wrote this post, she went to sleep and when she woke up, she had millions of notifications from people. Sarita says that she was finding out that Karim was in these singles groups. He's going around trying to pick up other women. And some of his friends would say that he's in dating groups and he's dating someone down the way and he's not being honest. And then she had women contacting her, letting her know that they had slept together. And Sarita said a lot of the time it was before her. Sarita says that Karim's wife told her that she was diagnosed in 2009. 
Sarita gets an anonymous text person who says Karim was diagnosed at my clinic in 2010 with HIV. Once we delivered the news to him, he never returned it for his follow-up visits and they apologized for what happened. By the time Sarita and Karim got together, Karim had been transmitting the HIV virus to women for five years. So Sarita hated his guts because now she's being traumatized all over again to know that it wasn't what she thought it was. She originally thought that he cheated, but now she knows that he intentionally transmitted the virus to her and wanted him dead and wondered every day, why hasn't someone killed him? Why is he still walking around having fun? Why is he not dead yet? So Sarita actually had a gun and was actually plotting to kill this man. But she decided against it. So Sarita had a colleague at the hospital who was a police officer who let her know that it is a crime to intentionally infect people with HIV. Sarita went to the police and filed a police report and they forwarded her case to the special victims unit. So Sarita says that she gave the police all of the information that she had collected. And she says that she was trying to get all of the people that she had found on board so they can all get him together. So Sarita let the police know that there were 12 other women that she was in contact with who he transmitted the virus to as well. Police asks her, would they be willing to give statements? So nobody wanted to talk and that's what she told the police. And she said, would this affect the case with him being brought to justice? And the police lady says, not necessarily. So Sarita says that she was prepared to wait years. It was only months before Karim was arrested. So Karim pled guilty to aggravated assault of a family member causing serious bodily injury. And he was sentenced to 30 entire years in prison. That is the end. I actually have another video coming for you guys. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I know it's late. I don't care. Okay, it's, it's Saturday night and some of you are home. And since y'all are home, I'm home and I'm here with you to post videos. Why the hell not? Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. If there's any other shows that you want me to recap, let your girl know. And I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye.